One of the most iconic monsters in movie history is also one of the most formidable. The xenomorph of the Alien series is fast, weaponized biology. Even its blood can kill you. But what kind of blood would you need to melt through pretty much anything? So here's the infamous scene from Alien. When trying to remove a face hugger, a futuristic scalpel spills a bit of xenomorph blood. The blood, or whatever is coursing through this hugger's veins, almost instantly corrodes the metal deck of the spaceship and makes it all the way through two other floors. We'll get to metal melting in just a second. First, a little bit of chemistry. You've probably heard of acids and bases, right? Well, we determine what are acids and what are bases by how they break apart in solutions like water. So for example, acids tend to break apart and produce a lot of hydrogen ions, or basically just protons, and acids donate a hydroxide ion, which is just an oxygen atom with a hydrogen atom attached. You've probably also heard of the pH scale, which typically runs from 0 to 14 and is just a measurement of how many hydrogen ions are in a mixture. At 7, a mixture is neutral. The ions that would make it either acidic or basic cancel each other out. At 0, something is very, very acidic, something like battery acid. And at 14, something is very, very basic, so basic, like bleach. Acids and bases can go below zero or above 14, but your blood can't even get close to either of those. Most of your blood is water, and water is neutral, therefore your blood is almost neutral with a pH of 7.3. That's why, for example, crime scene investigators can use the indicator chemical that is very hard to say, and even harder to write, phenolphthalein to pick out the basic ions in your blood and turn a brilliant pink when it contacts blood so that they can see, you know, like where you were, where people were murdered. But life, at least mammalian life, lives in a very small band of the pH spectrum. If your blood falls below a pH of 7 for even a few seconds, we get a condition called acidosis, which means our blood is too acidic and we can quickly slip into a coma and die. Our blood doesn't even get near metal melting levels. Reptilian blood can keep its tangle of tubes alive in a pH range of maybe 6 to 8, but still, this is pretty mild as far as acid and bases go. To get to xenomorph blood, we have to go lower. Much, much lower. Like, nuke it from orbit lower. One of the most feared chemicals known to man is hydrofluoric acid, or HF for short. This stuff is so scary. It can melt through glass and ceramic and metal, and it is so dangerous that if it got on your skin, it would interfere with your nerves. Wait. There we go. It would interfere with your nerves so that the, the melting through your tissue would feel painless and it would go through your tissue and into your bones and then it would start leaching the calcium out of your bones and it would, it would go through your bones too. But at least you'd probably have a heart attack first before that happened because the acid would also strip all the calcium out of your blood and you'd be straight up dead. You can't even store hydrofluoric acid in a normal container like a glass beaker because it would just eat through it. But hydrofluoric acid isn't, strictly speaking, a stronger acid than stomach acid, and we all have that in our bodies as you're watching this video. Ooh, and we're fine. So what's going on? Well, the power of hydrofluoric acid is actually in its fluorine atom, the most reactive element on Earth. It's so reactive that it f breaks bonds apart because those atoms want to bond with fluorine instead of the glass that it was making before. The atoms in my hand would want to bond with fluorine more than they would want to bond and make up my hand. Ow. But if you mix hydrofluoric acid with a compound of fluorine and antimony, you get something really, really scary. Fluoroantimonic acid, or the strongest acid known to man. It's that many times stronger than plain old stomach acid. And if our previous example, hydrofluoric acid, has a pH of 2.1, then fluoroantimonic acid has a pH of negative 31.3. That's corrosive. It is corrosive enough to get through pretty much everything except for specially made synthetic chemicals and protectants. But it would definitely get through a spaceship hull.
But that melting would probably happen pretty slowly, as these videos of hydrofluoric acid eating through flesh and glass attest to. Okay, so, if a xenomorph's blood was made up of fluoroantimonic acid and the liquid part of its blood was hydrofluoric acid, you can't have it just be water because fluoroantimonic acid, when it mixes with water, it, um, explodes, and uh, the, the xenomorph was supplied with fluorine and antimony in it by its diet or by genetic engineering, and the interior of its veins was lined with some chemical like Teflon, which is just hydrogen and fluorine bonds because it's the strongest bond known to organic chemistry, then if you were to poke an alien, the blood that would come out would create an alien-like corrosive event. Woo! Because science! Game over, man! Game over. Thank you so much for watching. You probably thought that secondary pair of jaws on a xenomorph was just an invention, right? Wrong. Look at this photo. These are of pharyngeal jaws on a moray eel. A lot of marine animals have jaws like this. Uh, the top picture shows in blue and red the setup that the pharyngeal jaws have, and in the bottom it, it shows them lunging out to help grab meals and bring them back, bring them back into the throat. So, yes, xenomorph mouths are totally real. Tell your friends.